Germany's plan to reduce carbon dioxide emissions includes renewables replacing coal, as well as its nuclear power. The country's plan is to have renewable energy provide 40 to 45 percent of its generation by 2025 and 80 percent by 2050, up from 30 percent in 2025, and to shutter all of its nuclear units by 2022. Germany's need to find new sources of power is imperative. In 2011, following the Fukushima disaster in Japan, Germany took the decision to shut down all its nuclear reactors. Up until then, a quarter of its power came from nuclear. However, replacing nuclear power with renewable energy has proven difficult, mainly due to the intermittency of wind and solar power. When wind and solar are not available to generate electricity, Germany power buyers turn to coal. In fact, the country opened over 10 gigawatts of new coal-fired power plants over the past five years. Despite the large increase in solar and wind power, many say Germany is likely to miss its 2020 target to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 40 percent below 1990 levels. Its carbon dioxide emissions increased in 2016 to 906 million tons compared to 902 million in 2015. The German Environment Agency says the trend is due to the transport sector. The figure stood in contrast with Germany's image as a front-runner in the transition towards clean energy. For the energy vendor, its energy transmission plan to succeed, experts have warned that Germany will have to do much more. It will have to get off gasoline and diesel too. The transportation sector produces about 17% of the country's emissions. The government's goal is to have a million electric cars on the road by 2020. So far, there are about 40,000. The basic problem is that the cars are still too expensive for most Germans. Feltham has proven that a high renewable energy future is possible today. How to maximize this on the global stage was the focus of this gathering in Berlin. The fourth in the series, this year's Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue focused on how to successfully accelerate an innovative energy transition integrating all sectors. The most important point, I think, in favor of the energy transition is that it helps us bring about prosperity around the world, that it helps us create economic growth for many decades to come and that it is that is also an opportunity for us to create more energy by polluting the environment a lot less. This is the great challenge we are facing. The second point that you can take back to your presidents and prime ministers is that if you're fast, if you're one of the first movers, that you can then also do a good business with the energy transition. The energy transition is becoming a business case. The International Renewable Energy Agency, in its new report, just launched at the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue, says increasing energy system investment by 30% to year 2050 in favor of renewable energy and energy efficiency can create over 11 million additional energy sector jobs, completely offsetting job losses in the fossil fuel industry. If we are going to meet these decarbonization goals, we have to speed up, and we believe that we need... Uh, uh, progress to be six times faster than what we've seen in recent years. But we be believe it's achievable because of what we're seeing in terms of cost declines in technology, the innovation processes that are supporting the development of new uh, investments uh, around the world. Renewable energy has incredible potential, but until power grids are modernized, they will lag behind fossil fuels. That's what experts are saying. The current electric grids can't handle millions of electric vehicles and fluctuating spiked energy from wind and solar, nor does it have the ability to be flexible the way a natural gas power plant is at this time. The best power plants for energy efficiency and lowering carbon emissions while keeping costs reasonable are natural gas plants. The real challenge remains not the power system anymore. We believe that the 
argument about the future of the power system has been won by renewables and efficiency. What we need is a dramatic improvement in the electrification of end-use sectors like house, uh, heating, cooling, housing, industry, transportation. If we can have renewable energy penetration into end-use sectors, we believe that that is where the real progress will be achieved in terms of the decarbonization uh, that, we, that we require. Uh, essentially, we believe that the share of electricity consumed in end-use sectors would need to double from around 20% in 2015 to 40% by 2050. And that we should explore much more the direct use of uh, uh, other renewables such as ge ge solar thermal, geothermal, and uh, bioenergy resources in the energy mix in a much more fundamental way than we've been doing. Why mature economies such as Germany have tried large-scale renewables successfully, these successes weren't achieved without fossil fuels backing them up. The Energy Information Administration's annual energy outlook 2017 to 2050 has renewables at only 18 to 26 percent penetration by 2050. Electric vehicles currently have 1% of the market and are projected to have only gained 6% by 2040. The benefits need to reach all people and protecting the climate must not be a program for the elite. I therefore believe that the future lies in a cooperative climate and energy policy in which people participate. And this is not only true of national level, but also of international level. It's quite clear that Germany and the EU are committed to the Paris Agreement and to our climate targets. We will demonstrate that through specific measures for the time after 2020 and 2030. This also means that we are committed to the joint commitment by the industrial countries to mobilize an annual 100 billion US dollars from 2020. And in this context, we will be doubling our international climate financing from public funding by 2020, and we will continue to support our partner countries in the global south. Experts say climate change has already started influencing energy demand patterns in most countries. Peak hour patterns, air conditioning intensity, and need for water desalinization are among daily life processes that have changed to cope with increasing extreme temperature variations. Several examples of these changes are already happening today. Energy supply has been negatively affected by changing weather patterns. One case in point relates directly to changing water availability. As water levels decrease due to lower precipitation and increased evaporation. Capacity for electricity production, for example, from hydropower and other water-intensive generation technologies may decline. Decreasing water availability can also negatively affect cooling and cleaning systems required for concentrated solar power, nuclear power, and various other thermal generation technologies. It will be vital to dovetail climate policy and energy policy better in order to formulate new national targets. If we're to do that, we need a reality check which looks at the actual market developments and the potential in the energy sector. We believe there's a great potential here which we can leverage. And I don't need to tell you that the energy sector has d developed so dynamically in recent years that the assumptions made in 2014 on which the first NDC round of NDCs was based, is quite clearly less than our current expectations. Just think of the cost reductions in renewables. Just think of the innovations in electric mobility and electricity storage. Just think of the potential for energy efficiency, but also the uncertainties about fossil fuels, such as, for example, the development in oil prices. Following coherence, the second key point is reliability. This is true of policy makers and of genuinely long-term signals. We need the confidence of all stakeholders in this from citizens to investors. Demand for electricity is also growing worldwide. Experts expect an 80% rise in global electricity generation by 2040. 
This is not just a matter of pent-up demand in developing countries. The spread of computers, phones and other devices in industrialized countries is also fueling demand for electricity. Clearly, the solution to this dilemma is to generate power from renewable energy sources in a way that is as climate neutral as possible. But this radical shift presents us with tremendous technical challenges that require an entirely new way of managing our energy system. That's our program for the week. Thank you for watching. Do check our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash channelsweb. Click on the playlist menu and then click at file for this episode and other episodes of the program. You can also follow me on Twitter. For me, Ayola Kasim and the S5 crew here in Lagos. It's bye for now.